May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. August 30th, 2024, Friday of the 21st week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to evangelize, not through the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ become empty. For the word of the cross is certainly foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who have been saved, that is, to us, it is the power of God. For it has been written, I will perish the wisdom of the wise, and I will reject the discernment of the prudent. Where are the wise? Where are the scribes? Where are the truth seekers of this age? Has not God made the wisdom of this world into foolishness? For the world did not know God through wisdom, and so, in the wisdom of God, it pleased God to accomplish the salvation of believers through the foolishness of our preaching. For the Jews ask for signs, and the Greeks seek wisdom, but we are preaching Christ crucified. Certainly to the Jews this is a scandal, and to the Gentiles this is foolishness. But to those who have been called, Jews as well as Greeks, the Christ is the virtue of God and the wisdom of God. For what is foolishness to God is considered wise by men, and that which is weakness to God is considered strong by men. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm. The response is, The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Praise becomes the upright. Give praise to the Lord on the harp. Sing to him with the psaltery, the instrument of ten strings. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done with faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment. The earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord brings to naught the counsels of nations, and he rejects the devices of people, and casts away the counsels of princes. But the counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish, and five were prudent. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The prudent ones, however, took oil in containers along with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, a cry rang out, The groom is coming! Go out to meet him! Then all the virgins woke up and prepared their lamps. The foolish ones said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. The prudent ones replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the vendors and buy some for yourselves. While they were on their way to buy the oil, the groom arrived. The prepared virgins went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How are you preparing your heart and actions to truly show love and charity, just as the wise virgins prepared their lamps? 
Jesus told his disciples this parable, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Matthew 25 verses 1 to 2 The ten virgins in this parable refer to the bridesmaids who were following Jewish tradition by going to the home of the bride to await the coming of the groom for a wedding. This parable is one of a few parables Jesus told that emphasizes the importance of being vigilant in our Christian walk. As the parable goes on, we are told that the groom was delayed and that the bridesmaids fell asleep. Upon waking, the foolish ones had no more oil for their lamps and had to leave to get some more. When they returned, they discovered that the groom had already arrived and that the door was locked. They then knocked and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But the reply came to them, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. And they missed out on the wedding celebration. Traditionally, the oil has been understood as a reference to charity. The message is simple. As we prepare to meet our Lord in heaven, it is not enough to make the claim that we are Christians. We must also produce the good fruit of charity by our actions. Faith must result in charity, otherwise it is not true faith at all. This parable should be taken seriously. We should use it as a regular source of examination of our lives, in regard to the charity we have or do not have. When you look at your life, can you point to regular acts of charity that flow from your love of God and are bestowed upon others? Charity is not based on your preferences in life. It's not based on what you feel like doing. Charity is always selfless and sacrificial. It always looks toward the good of the other. How much charity is alive in your life? Jesus clearly told this parable because he was aware of many who professed a faith in God but did not live the love of God. It's very easy to live our lives day in and day out, doing what we do because of our personal likes or dislikes. However, it is very difficult to foster true charity within our souls and to regularly choose to love others because it is good for them. We must work to foster charity, first, in our thoughts. Critical and condemning thoughts must be eliminated, and we must strive to see others as God sees them. Charity must also direct our words. Our words must be encouraging of others, kind, supportive, and merciful. Our actions become charitable when we become generous with our time, go out of our way to serve, and are diligent in the ways we express our love of others. Reflect today upon the high calling you have been given to live an active and manifest life of charity. Spend time reflecting upon what charity truly is. Have you allowed yourself to become guided by a more secular and selfish form of love? Do you act more out of selfish preferences than out of self-giving and sacrifice? Do you truly build people up and witness the love of God to them? Try to answer these questions seriously. This parable spoken from our Lord is much more than a story. It is truth. And the truth is that some will arrive at the day of judgment without the necessary oil for their lamps. Take our Lord seriously and examine your life of charity. Where you are lacking, become fervent in your mission to change. In the end, you will be eternally grateful you did. Let us pray. My loving Lord, you showed us all that true love is selfless and sacrificial. You came to this world to serve and to give your sacred life for us all. May I open my life more fully to your love, so that your love may also affect and direct every relationship I have. Fill me with the gift of charity, dear Lord, so that I will be fully prepared for the day of my particular judgment. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. 
Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.